Hey guys, and welcome to another Factorio tutorial. I'm Exterminator, and thank you for joining me. Today we are going to be going over blueprints, how to import them, how to export them, uh, what you can do with them in regards to uh, how you keep them with your save and such, and then also the deconstruction planner and uh, different ways you can filter it. So we'll start with the blueprints. Uh, in 014, uh, you, you were able to research and craft blueprints and deconstruction planners. Uh, however, now in 015, they come uh, available just from the start and you access them through this menu up here, which you can either just click or hit B. And this is where you get your blueprints. They cost nothing to make. Um, same with the deconstruction planner and your blueprint books. They cost nothing to make. You have them from the very start of the game. And, uh, and this is where you can get them. So you can just grab whole blueprint books, uh, blueprints or deconstruction planners. Uh, if I just simply uh, just click and drag, it'll just, you know, put it in my inventory. And uh, and then this is also where you import strings. And this is part of the tutorial I really want to focus on because I think people are a little bit confused sometimes about how to import and export blueprint strings to share them. So uh, you import strings here. You just click import and you take your string and you paste it here and you do import and then it will bring in uh, the, the blueprint for, for whatever string you have. So just as an example, um, how do we get strings? So if you right click a blueprint, you now have this option here to export to string. So you click this and you can either manually copy it or much easier would be to just hit the copy button. It is now copied to your clipboard. You can hit okay and you can do whatever you want with it, you know, post it somewhere um, or just for an example to show you if I just hit, if I paste it and hit import, I now have the blueprint. Of course, now I have two of them, but uh, that's how you would do that. So that's how you import and export blueprints now in 015. You do not need a mod or anything. It is built in. Now, you may have seen uh, several categories here, and this is also pretty important. Um, you have my blueprints. So this is your blueprint library. And then you have game blueprints, which I have none in here at the moment, but I will put some in here to show you. And then below this, if you were in a multiplayer game, you would have I think it's called like shared blueprints or something similar to that. Um, there would be another category below game blueprints, which is essentially everyone else's blueprints that are in the game. And, uh, and they, they come from the person's library, um, here. So my blue, let's start here. My blueprints, this is your blueprint library. These blueprints, um, persist through the entire game. Uh, meaning that these will carry through to a new save. I do these will carry through to, um, multiplayer and it's important to note this because you know you, you do want to be mindful of this and careful of this if you want your blueprints to be kept private I would suggest not putting them in here necessarily or at least taking them out for you join multiplayer because like I said anything that is in your uh, my blueprint section your blueprint library when you go to a multiplayer game everybody in that game uh, will be able to access your blueprints. Um, they can't change them like for you and they, and they can't delete them for you or anything, but they can see them and then they can also take them. Like, again, it won't take them, it won't get rid of yours, but they can take a copy of it. And uh, and yeah, so if you want your some of your blueprints to be private and, and such, then you do want to be mindful of that when you go into a multiplayer game. Uh, so that's how this works. These will, like I said, these will persist through uh, pretty much through my entire copy of Factorio. Uh, you know, if I start a new save, all these will be here. If I go to a different save that I've already started somewhere else, these will be here. Um, so that's how that works. Game blueprints um, are persistent just through your save. Okay, so anything I drop in here, for example, let's go ahead and take, um, let's take this and if we hit B, um, I can, I have it selected and you just drag and drop it. I'm going to stick it here. Okay, so these will now persist in this save. Okay, so if I close the game and reopen it and come into the save, um, even if I've deleted it off of out of my inventory, if I've like, you know, put it in a box or shot it or something, um, then this one will still be here and I can re-grab it. Okay, so this is persistent through the particular save. These will not carry over to any other save though. And another important note is that these will not um, carry through to multiplayer. Okay, so this could maybe be a good place to put ones you want private, uh, you know, only per se on a per save basis. So that's what these are. And then again, the shared blueprints, like when you go into multiplayer, um, those will just be the blueprints from everybody's blueprint libraries. 
And another way you can, like, like I said, you can pick them up and just drop them in here or an easier way if you want them in your library is if you take a blueprint, you have an option here to drop to export to blueprint library. And again, let me reiterate, this is to the library, not the game blueprint section, which I just showed. Um, so if you specifically want them in only the game blueprints, you do need to actually open the menu and go into there, but you can just drop them here. Okay, so there's that. Importing, exporting, how they're stored, how you get them. Um, just a couple other notes here. Uh, if you right click again on a blueprint, this is actually a bad example. Uh, let's find one that is a better example. If you have something with modules, for example, like this one, uh, you have a checkbox here for modules. You can essentially uncheck the module option. This will take all the modules out of it and then you need to hit the save button. Um, but a quick note guys is once you do this and you save it, you cannot re-enable the modules. Like if you go back into it, it, it won't remember that there were modules. It'll just think it never had them. So do be careful with that. Um, you can also right click materials out of here. Uh, so just, you know, if I just get rid of these, it just gets rid of all the beacons. Um, or you can go into the blueprint like in here. And if you right click stuff, it uh, will get rid of it like this. And then you can left click it again to make them all come back. And you can actually drag. I'm just holding my mouse and dragging. You can do it this way as well. Same with the right click. So this is a good way to edit blueprints. Unfortunately, you cannot move anything around within it, um, but you can uh, get rid of or then re-add things. Uh, you can choose the icons, name it up here, and again, uh, export string. So now how do you delete them? Well, if you have a blueprint that's already made like this, you can delete it here. You can just, um, and this gets rid of the, the entire thing. Like it just um, gets rid of it completely. However, if you just want to clear a blueprint, um, so for example, if I take like this right here, if I just want to clear this, but keep the empty blueprint, you know, cause I may want to use it for something else and don't want to go back in here and get a new one. Um, if you shift right click it, it clears what's in it, but it keeps the, the you know, the, the print itself, it, it keeps the empty blueprint. Okay, so that's how that works. And uh, unfortunately there is no way to really easily get rid of um, empty blueprints because you know, you can't right click it. If I right click it, it just gives me an option to put it in my library or use it. Uh, so if you actually wanna get rid of these cause these can fill up your inventory sometimes, um, you have to, the best way I know of is to just stick them in a box and shoot it. I really hope at some point they add an option to do like a similar, like right click it and then have an option to delete an empty one. Um, but currently there's no good way to do that. Now that takes care of that pretty much in terms of the deconstruction planner. Um, again, you get deconstruction planners from up here. Uh, if you right click the deconstruction planner, this is where you can filter them. And this is a new feature in 015. Uh, you can destroy them again. You can actually export the string so you can share your filtered uh, deconstruction planners with other people if you'd like. Um, and you can have multiple of these. You can just grab more. So if you want like different um, sets of like filtered stuff, you can do that. So there's a few options. There's trees, rocks only, which is really nice. This makes it so it's only going to kill um, or deconstruct trees and rocks, even if there's other stuff in the area which is really, really nice for like clearing forests for rail lines or something. It won't get rid of the rails, only the trees and rocks. So there's that, um, there's whitelist and blacklist. If you click in here, this is where you select stuff. There's the ability to do most items in the game, not everything. Like you can't um, tell it to pull modules out of buildings, unfortunately. Hopefully that's an option at some point in the future. Um, but if you just click, let's just, uh, let's for example, just take, passive providers and uh, requester chests. So whitelist, when you have whitelist ticked, any items you select um, is, it's only going to deconstruct these items. That's what whitelist is. So if I take this and I go here, I'm, I'm hovering over everything, but it's only going to deconstruct the requesters and passive providers. So that's when I whitelist it. It's saying only do these things, okay? And ignore everything else. And then blacklist acts exactly the opposite. If I blacklist, this is now going to deconstruct everything except passive providers and requesters. You can see here now, it's selecting everything except those two types of chests. So you can toggle that back and forth, um, you know, and select however many you want here. There are a few other options. If you go into the question mark thing, you can get rid of entity ghosts, which is nice um, items on the ground, which can be really nice. Um, you just, filter that for whitelist um, items on the ground and then 
you know, it'll just pick up anything on the ground. In fact, I think I left something here. Uh, no, it must have been somewhere else in the base. But anyway, that's how that would work. And then uh, there's item request slots, which is really nice. It'll um, get rid of any anything in the item request slot. And then tile ghost. Um, tiles being like concrete and stuff, you can filter it for that. Trees, all types of, you know, buildings and stuff. And then tiles as well. You have the option for tiles. Um, normal, tiles are selected when no entities are found. Always, tiles are always selected. Even when entities are found, tiles are never selected. Entities uh, are ignored unless the trees only. Entity filter option is selected. So this is how you do tiles. And again, the tiles are just the concrete and such. So that's how that would work. And there you go, guys. That's pretty much it. That's all I can think of to cover with the um, blueprints and the deconstruction planner. The filtering ability is really, really nice. And again, you can just have however many sets of these you want. You can just import them for free. Um, and then, yeah, again, so if I hit B, uh, you know, these will persist through. You get your new books here. I guess one last thing to cover would be the books. Uh, if I just grab a new book here, um, if you just take a blueprint, for example, and let's just take this one and you, you left click the blueprint to select it and then you left click on a blueprint book or not, sorry, right click, right click on a blueprint book, you can just drop them in here um, like that. And then it, it holds like a thousand. So you're never going to run out of room in a blueprint book. You can name it. You can export the whole blueprint book string, which is really nice. Delete it. And to scroll through these, uh, let me just drop a few in here. Uh, because you need to be careful, you can accidentally take them out. Like if I open this and I just click this to use it, um, it actually takes it out of the book. Um, so the, the way to do it is to open the blueprint book itself, which is this. So you take the blueprint book, left click on it, and then to scroll through, you hold shift and you can use your mouse wheel. You can assign it to a different, like if you want it on a key or something. Um, you can reassign it, but this will scroll through it while keeping them all in the blueprint book. This is really nice for like rail books um, and stuff like that. So anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this one. Hopefully this was helpful and uh, kind of gives you a better idea of how the blueprints work in 015 with importing them, exporting them, how they're stored and how to edit them as well as the deconstruction planner. As always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed and found it helpful. If you did, uh, I would appreciate leaving a like, and I would love to hear any thoughts you have down in the comments. But until next time, I look forward to seeing you all, and do take care.